Oh, my. in a box. You know, if it's a big enough box, I've been really well. But it's pigeonhole pain. Pigeons go in holes? Yes. You ever seen a pigeon in a hole? Yes, yes. Pigeons. I've never seen a pigeon in a hole. Most pigeons have a signed hole. And so when they come to their home place or a place that they regularly message right. to, they go directly to that oh, particular you mean the ones that are like that are, that are trained. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Always available to give esoteric yeah. messages to people. Maybe they don't want to be in their home. I, I, I've never seen a pigeon strike though. Although I suppose pilots have seen that. True. Shalom, um, everybody. Good to see all of you. Welcome in this. Um, I, well, I was prepared to say thanks for braving the weather, but I guess the storm they're calling for is not coming or is it coming still you don't know it's late it was delayed by the airlines oh, that would be yes it. It, was, it was taking southwest and it just doesn't know what to do well as usual it's great to be able to come together and take a breath of shabbat together starting with some songs so i hope that we can all take a moment to uh relax into the weekend coming shabbat entering our our uh, our homes and our souls and uh and we'll begin as we always do in song Yeah. Yeah. And I, I to try a harmony. He <laughs> Thank you. Also to our friends who are with us on Zoom tonight. Good to see you through the circus. Good to see you here in person. Good to give you the opportunity for us to say Shabbat Shalom to somebody we haven't yet seen tonight. Person I haven't yet seen tonight. Well, yes, no, I don't know. Sound issues again? Okay, on page one hundred twenty. Do you like the Shabbat candles? 
we bring some light and we hope a glimpse of a better age. That's how the rabbis understood this act. Olam Haba. Shabbat is a little taste of the world to come. And that taste begins now as we formally enter Shabbat. Page 130, we enter Kabbalah Shabbat. In the brackets, if you have. Page one, please. Following page, sing to God a new song. Shir Adonai, Shir Farash. I don't think we're going to all together. Thank you. 
138. It's our custom here at TBT to rise for the last verse of Lefa Dodi. This is when we greet Shabbat, welcome Shabbat into our midst, and there is even a little choreography and a bow involved. Sing verses 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. Oh, 
that vigorous spirit, that ruach filling this room is really just oh, awakened something beautiful. It's like a beating heart right now, TBT, <laughs> literally and figuratively, or at least spatially, shall we say, in a beating heart. Um, we're on Shalom Aleichem, page 142, friends. This is a melody that we began learning about a month ago. We still haven't heard it. That's okay. We'll sing it once and invite everybody to join in at the uh, chorus. Blessed. <laughs> Ma'arim on page 146. 
with our call to prayer. Please rise if it's comfortable.
You want it done? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> <laughs> or you could be the bottom one that's responsible. You should. Oh, you want to do that? Do that. You lead. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is all rehearsed, by the way. <laughs> In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt we were delivered. At Sinai we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God. Keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. Page 158. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Over us the shelter of your peace. 
close to him to touch him and help him. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings and defend us against enemies filled with warfare and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and the peace of the morn. Together, Baruch Atah Adonai, Akhoras Yitzhak Shalom Aleinu, Al-Kol HaOr Yisrael, Al-Yerushalayim. Page 164.
just ask him to say something between you and God. Our own silent prayers can do a much. about people in our lives who are struggling with illness so that we can pray for all of them 
and, and hope that they will find healing and strength in their capacity. So I will share the names that we know, who, people who are needing the healing, and I invite you to share your own names as well, especially if your loved one's not on this list. And you can do so whether you are here or whether you're joining us via Zoom, you can do it in the chat. <coughs> Our loved ones and temple members to begin. April Diamato, Norma Diamond, Ann Karamanis, Josh Lipschitz, Ken Gowerman, Heidi Sussman, Mark Warner, and Debbie Goldshine. And the loved ones of our congregants include Barak Yaakov, Ben Abraham Masala, Tamar Bad Rachel, Rav Chaim Ben Leach, Tani Ambrosino, Mickey Bart, Jay Flick, Michelle Rusinko, Babs White, Joanne Casulo, Hal Katz, Bart Young, Sydney Cher, Matthew Pincus, Sarai Casey, Brian Kamen, Steve Kamen, Cecilia Barron, Marvin Goldberg, John Van Kienbergen, Susie Apgar, Claude Scales, Barbara Whitehouse, Vivian Hendricks, Roberta Gleit, Paul Fritzman, Bruce Petrock, Raymond Wolf, Kim Weaver, Kim Maurer, Ben Peck, Georgina Peck, Marion Macon, Martha and Mark Potter, Monica Trapoziello, Gloria Newell, Vivian Meyer, Joan Kuhn, Carol Chapin, Adrian Wasserman, Sherry Cohn, Joan Sidney, Trevor Jones, Peter Davis, Michael Stafford, Ira White, Deanna Rosenberg Garabo, Drew Garabo, and David Turner. And to all of their names, we add our own loved ones who include Amy Kowski. Amy Kowski. Nolan Cameron. And Nolan Cameron. <laughs> Emily Belgard. Emily Belgard. Next up, Brenda on Zoom. We said at page 371 in our prayer book. And we pray for all of their healing. to learn with my, um, my mentor and truly even my friend, uh, my teacher, Rabbi Daniel Temel, this past uh, spring, early summer. And as he says, I'll begin with his words, I do not know how to not love Israel. I do not know how to not love Israel. This week was especially a dramatic one in Israel. 
there's so much to say. I'll start with a dramatic scene in downtown Tel Aviv where a group of protesters assembled wearing those iconic red and white habits from The Handmaid's Tale, assembled around the big fountain in the middle of Tel Aviv in, in Kikar Dizengoff, Dizengoff Square. Those of you who have been to Israel have probably walked by there. It's a very popular tourist area. This was just the latest of many recent protests around the country in recent weeks. There have been crowds in the hundreds of thousands at these protests. At the same time, terror attacks and revenge killings have racked Israel and the West Bank with violence. I think it's very important for us all to understand what's going on in Israel, because I think it's important for us to have a relationship with Israel. I love Israel. I do not know how not to love Israel. I know that you join me in that love. We care for Israel's security, vibrancy, and future as a beacon of both Judaism and democracy in the Middle East. Well, many of you have also joined me in great trepidation and concern ever since the new government formed earlier this year, and it appears that some of our fears have been substantiated. This Wednesday, the so-called override law passed a procedural vote in Israel's parliament, which is called the Knesset. Among other things, the override law allows the Knesset to overrule Israel's Supreme Court by a simple majority vote. So that would be like Congress assembling and taking a simple up-down up, vote for both chambers, and they could overrule a Supreme Court decision. It's not exactly the same because Israel's system is a little bit different, but that's the basic sense of it. 61 members of Knesset constitute the majority of their parliament. It also is the same number, by the way, as the minimum number to form a governing coalition. You have to have one more vote than half the house to form a government there. So essentially what this means is, and by the way, keep in mind there can be elections many times, even within the same year. There have been five elections within the last six years or something like that, which is a lot, even for Israel. But it means the decisions of the Supreme Court there will be far more reliant on the caprice of whoever happens to be able to form a coalition at that specific time when the decision is rendered. If that sounds deeply troubling to you, it is because it should sound deeply troubling to you. I think it should trouble all of us. As we know, democracy is many things, but it's not just about majority rule. It's about checks and balances. It's about preserving minority rights. It's about the independence of the judiciary. Oh, Christ, I stop this and there is more. I know. Okay. Other bills being put forward at the same time would give the governing coalition the majority power to appoint judges, rather than the current system, which requires agreement between political and professional representatives from Israel's Bar Association. Finally, the bill will bar the Supreme Court from ruling on appeals against basic law which function as Israel's constitution. And in the absence of a formal constitution, those basic laws are what allows for, we would call it basic human rights to be enshrined in civil society, things like human dignity and liberty that we rely on as part of our constitution. Taken together, these new rules, which I did not even mention all of, by the way, threaten to erase judicial review, seriously threatening minority, rights, hence the Handmaid's Tale protesters were very concerned that women's rights may be in danger there. The new laws would give nearly unfettered political power to the governing coalition. Prime Minister Netanyahu could not be more thrilled about this, obviously, especially given that he is currently the subject of multiple corruption investigations, and these new rules would let him shield himself from judicial scrutiny. I think some of you were at that learning session we had with Rabbi Rich Kirshen, right, who is, the, who is a reform rabbi and also an Israeli for 30 years, and he taught us a little bit about this, this new coalition. Israel's current government is easily the most extreme it has ever been in its history, on any side, right or left. Just consider for a moment the major players within the coalition. I'll name just a few of them. Bitsal Smotrich, who has incited violence against Arabs and openly called himself a fascist and a homophobe. 
Avi Maoz, who is now in charge of matters connected to Jewish identity in Israel, despite his repugnant comments about reformed Jews and LGBTQ people. Arya Derry, who's the leader of the Mizrahi party for many years, called Shas, the coalition had to pass legislation allowing him to serve as a minister because he had prison sentences that he served for bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. <coughs> Itamar Ben Gvir, who has faced charges of hate speech against Arabs and has been known to keep a picture in his living room of the terrorist Baruch Goldstein who massacred 29 Palestinians. These are people who have been convicted of crimes, some of them violent crimes. It's almost like a, a farce to imagine that such a government would be possible at Forum sounds like a Forum spiel, but unfortunately, it's reality. This is ex as extreme as extreme gets. A couple of weeks ago, I attended a learning session with Yossi Klein Halevi, who is a senior scholar at the Shalom Hartman Institute. For those of you who don't know Hartman, it's an incredible institution that connects Israelis and Palestinians and, and Muslims who do not live in Israel with Jews from the diaspora to consider Israel's dual mandate as a Jewish and democratic state and really considers both of them very highly. And what, what Yossi Klein Halevi had to say, oh, by the way, some of you have probably read his book. Uh, he wrote a, a great book about the 1967 war. Um, he also wrote the book Letters to My Palestinian Neighbors. If you've read that one, I highly recommend it. Yossi is famous in the Jewish world for being thoughtful across political divides about very difficult subjects. So it's striking then that what he said at that session of what, what's happening now is not a matter of reasonable people disagreeing, but rather that it's wrong and dangerous and should be a concern to all of us. In a letter, he called on diaspora Jews to organize and protest against these proposed changes. I will read a brief excerpt from his letter. He and his co-authors, Maddie Friedman and Daniel Gordis, begin by explaining that they frequently have to defend Israel against distortions and anti-Semitism in the world, but this moment feels different, so they're saying quite a different thing. And here's what they say. Protecting Israel also means defending it from political leadership that is undermining our society's cohesion and its democratic ethos, the foundations of the Israeli success story. The changes afoot will have dire consequences for the solidarity of Israel's society and for its economic miracle, as our leading economists are warning. It will also threaten Israeli-American relations, and it will do grave damage to our relations with you, our sisters and brothers in the diaspora. This crisis is unique and uniquely heartbreaking because it comes from within. None of us is an alarmist, but this is a moment for alarm, and one in which the voices of Israel's friends must be heard. I'm sure that as I was explaining what is going on in Israel, your mind was also wandering to other countries that are democracies, including our own, not for nothing, that have faced grave challenges trying the fabric of our democratic institutions. Unfortunately, this is Israel's flirtation with fascism. I really hope it will not prove to be more than that, but I am very concerned, and the reason I'm speaking about it tonight is because I refuse to normalize it or let it go by without acknowledging it, without asking all of us to pay attention to it, even though it has become normal within that society for right now. And thank God there are a lot of Israelis who feel just the same way at those protests of hundreds of thousands of people. By the way, at one of those protests of about 600,000, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, who's the president of the Union for Reform Judaism, spoke along the same line of concern that I'm speaking to you today. I want us to be able to talk about this. I want us to pay attention because it's hugely consequential for Israel's future and for the Jewish future. Now I have to be honest that I believe there are limited means currently at our disposal to immediately address this. Even Israelis are outraged that they feel powerless to stop these quote unquote reforms and are showing up as I mentioned by the hundreds of thousands like the Handmaid's Tale protesters to voice their grave concern for the future. So you might be thinking, what can we do? Well, for now, to start, there are two main things. The first is to support causes that are building Israel's robust democracy and pluralistic society from within. And there are many, many, many of them 
So I'd be happy to recommend to you if you want to talk about it, including the Israeli Reform Movement, how pleasant it's there, the Israeli Religious Action Center, which works for pluralism and tolerance within Israeli Jewish spaces, and the New Israel Fund, which supports all kinds of organizations in both Israel and the territories, as well as Jews and Palestinians and others who are working to build a more vibrant society together. Israel is the country of Israelis, but it is even more than that, and first and foremost, the Jewish homeland. It is the liberation project, bringing an end to the exile that our people knew for millennia. That is why I still love Israel, isn't it? That is why I will always love Israel, even if I could not be more horrified by its government's actions today. And so I hope that we will all do perhaps the third thing that we can start by doing, which is to offer a prayer for the state of Israel. I hope you'll join me, either in Hebrew or English. It's in your book. I think it's on page 377. O heavenly one, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love, spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your life and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen. This, this prayer was adapted, I believe, from, um, from the great Rav Kook, uh, who was the first um, rabbi of, of the state of Palestine before it was Israel, and was also the chief rabbi of Israel in its early stages period. And he was an Orthodox rabbi. Um, uh, I, I, I have to believe that he and so many of the other founders would just be horrified to see what is going on right now in this country. I mean, it's it's a shame to think about to think about people on all sides of the political divide, whether it's whether it's a, a Ben Gurion or a Herzl or a Jabotinsky, I think all of whom, despite their politics and angles into the question of of peace and self determination in Israeli civic society, would just be absolutely aghast to see what's going on there today. And I pray that that and every other democracy's flirtation with with fascism and populism. Um, these nativist voices that, that are full of hate will exit speedily in our day. Amen. Looking more toward the future, and a brighter future we hope, is the Alenu, so we invite you to please rise. On that day, the earth shall be one, God's name shall be one, says the prophet. May it be so. It's at page 500 and uh, at 86, 586.
ויש אנשים שזה יהיה זכרה מאיר כאשר הם עצמם אינם עוד בתוכנו, שרות אלה מפיצים בחשכת הליל, הם הם שמראים לאדם את הדרך. פייג' 595 She writes, there are stars up above so far away that we can only see their light long, long after the star itself has gone. And so it is with people that we love. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our day, these are the ways we remember. So we remember uh, within our congregation all of our loved ones who have left this earth, but certainly are close within our hearts on this day. Um, including those within the period of Shiva and Shiloshim. I see Sabrina and Natalie here, so I would ask you to, to please rise. I know you're remembering your, your mom and your grandma who recently passed away, Karen Flatley. Um, we're also, of course, remembering our Bubby Phyllis Hoffman in her period of Shiloshim. And um, I'll invite anybody else who's observing the Lord site uh, to please rise as I read the name of your loved one if you're comfortable doing so. And that includes Ira Goldman, Richard Klein, Gertrude Miller, Barbara Lee, George Walker, Benjamin Bernstein, Rose Geringer, Sarah Garth, Gertrude Hagen, Geraldine Stutzman, George Cohn, Murray Stutz, Howard Fox, Paul Rowland, Elma Guckenberg, and Milton Mansell. If there are others who are staying Kaddish tonight and wish to share the name of their loved one or allowed to please do so at this time. Gerard Ambrosino. Gerard Ambrosino. I invite us all to rise in solidarity with our mourners, as one community of support, as we recite these hallowed words from Mourners Cottage, it's on page 598. <laughs> <laughs> sneaking up on salty and <laughs> I was like oh my gosh it's this weekend um, <laughs> calling all spielers are you on are you an Oscar winner waiting to happen do you have a deep and abiding love of all things fun and funny have you watched a porn spiel and thought I can do that well now is your time to shine TBT and TBT religious school will both will both be putting on porn spiels and we need you <laughs> in the script. Good job, Jody. Do <laughs> um, whether you want to act in the Sunday, March 5th spiel at Religious School, prefer to join the cast of the adult spiel on Monday, March 6th from 6 to 8, 
or want to do both, this is your chance to be a very kosher. Am I allowed to say this on the mm -hmm. Hebrew mm -hmm. man? Okay. Hero, hero, hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come share the limelight with your TBT family. Contact Dr. C for more information. Join Rabbi Moss for Lunch and Learn, the Biblical Psalms, how the poetry of the Psalms can speak powerfully to different phases of our lives. We will meet on Zoom for four Thursdays in March, the 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th at 1 p.m. Call or email the office to sign up. On Sunday, March 19th, there will be a special adult education program, When Ballet Becomes Dangerous with TBT congregant and Stanford professor emeritus Janice Ross about using art to challenge authoritarian rule in Russia. Check your email for more information, call or email the office to sign up. Last but not least, our book drive continues. Please bring gently used books, preferably children's books because those are needed most, to TBT and put in the provided bins by the door. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Um, one more. March oh, yes. Night, March 9th, movie night for Kol Amin. The movie is Liberty Heights, and Janice Ross also will be facilitating the conversation. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. Great. Great. And if anybody wants to go to dinner tonight, there's still a few mm -hmm. spots left for our reservation. Ooh. So, imagine oh. us going to dinner at Cafe Allegra right after this. Uh -huh. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I will also add, if you don't mind, um, that we have two of our Bnei Mitzva uh, participating in the carnival as part of their mitzvah project. Uh, Olivia Mervon is going to be selling bracelets that she has made, and uh, Lucy Raskin is going to have a box available for people who wish to make donations for the animal shelter. Um, they're taking new or gently used toys, dog clothes, towels, clean bedding, anything you can think of that shelter might need. Be a gently used dog toy? Yes, I have no idea what a gently used is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the rejects, the rejects. There's, you know, there are dogs who look at toys and go, I'd rather read a book. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I'm. <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> the gently ignored dog gently toy. Ignored. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to my time with the, with the men's club. I see that there are a couple of men's club people. Uh, on Sunday, we're meeting. Uh, 10, 10 30 men's club i'll be with you and just so you heard come in the other side okay all right and steven's going to be the other side there are some men's club people and maybe even some potential men's yeah so 9 30 for bagels and coffee then 10 30 right. with the vendors. right exactly so i'll see you at 10 30 after confirmation exactly so okay very good let's make a uh, kiddish everybody um page 123 if you'd like to follow along with the words
I give them bail. Or sneak up and just eat the rest of them. That's what I always wanted to do. Church, cough them down? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, honey. This song is almost like a prayer, and it has a, a little bit of a response part. There's a there's a there's a line, and then the, and then everybody sort of says in a prayerful way, "Kol shenevakesh luyehi," which means "May all that we ask for come to pass." And that's on page six fifty six. You want to take a look? The English is on the following page. It's really quite a beautiful song, plaintive song. So maybe let's just try the, the, the refrain and the chorus together so we can all feel like we have some access to the song. So you hear da 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 da